Welcome students who are taking financial accounting. Um, in this series of videos, we are looking at the uh, theory videos for chapter two, analyzing and re recording business transactions. And uh, you know, this is the first video and I don't know how many videos it's going to take to uh, get through the theory uh, in this chapter, but let's just move on. All right, now, before I get started, just as a reminder, um, there are additional theory videos, uh, especially for chapters one, two, and three on the in the business group on the student community. So you go under, you know, obviously you're looking at uh, this in the business group. So, um, you know, there's uh, about 20 or so videos that are titled Introduction to Accounting and Bookkeeping. Uh, so they were created as a supplement for a previous edition of the textbook that uh, coincided with a, a greater project that needed to be done. So um, we created that as an introduction and those videos are uh, additional supplement to, you know, even the first three chapters in this textbook, because let's face it, concepts are concepts. Okay. So they were originally put up. Um, you will also see uh, additional videos up there from Matt Fisher, who is not affiliated with Penn Foster, but uh, we found them on YouTube and uh, seem, you know, it's just a different way of expressing the same concepts. So you might want to check those out. And then of course you, um, if you're at this point in time, you had hopefully had seen the chapter one videos. Now, um, you know, the first bullet here to this introduction says covered in chapter one and other videos. And in making these videos, um, it's kind of difficult because with financial accounting, with accounting period, um, everything is interrelated. It's hard to talk about one thing. It's not like talking about the Boston Tea Party and only the Boston Tea Party, which has nothing to do with George Washington crossing the Delaware. Okay. Um, you know, with accounting, when you make a debit somewhere you know it affects something else as a credit somewhere which affects you know uh, a ledger account which affects a trial balance which affects a financial statement so you know it's very difficult to talk in isolation and in chapter one you know we started out at this here high you know 40,000 foot bird's eye view of accounting and I you know presented a lot of uh, uh, theory in that chapter, which as I started to put together the slides for this chapter, I found that I had already covered a lot of the stuff in the first chapter. Um, and we're also, I'm also running into the difficulty of the way the information that's being presented in the textbook doesn't come so naturally to me. And I'm an accountant. Okay. I mean, the information is correct. The concepts are correct, but the way it's being presented is not the, doesn't flow as easily. It, it's not, the way things actually happen in the workplace. Um, so as I was doing that, and as I move forward, you know, I'm starting to see that, uh, you know, things are, you know, some of the ideas are starting to take a little bit better shape as to, you know, being usable. I, I think that first chapter was more about, you know, how everything is related to the accounting equation and the expanded accounting equation. And you heard my thoughts about the expanded accounting equation there. So um, in these theory videos, um, I, again, as I go through, you know, I'm going to be giving you my insights, my experience, and try to relate it to you know, some of this theory note, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can just skip reading the textbook. You know, you have to read the textbook. That's what you're responsible for. These are just supplemental videos to further explain, expand, expand upon. And like I said, give my insights into uh, accounting after doing this for 30 years. So, um, you know, you have to read the book and study it and you have to do the homework problems in order to be able to get accounting. Um, if not, you know, you're going to struggle with it. And I also advise that when you get to the end of lesson three, you know, you're going to have to do a greater project. And I see an awful lot where, uh, students move on and do the next lesson and the next lesson after that, and the next lesson after that, and take all of those exams. And then they want to come back and do the greater project. The problem with that is, is that they've forgotten a lot of the stuff and they end up struggling with it. 
So as you go through chapters one, two, and three here, and you get to the greater project, do the greater project before you move on. All right. It'll save you just, you know, you're only creating more work for yourself down the road if you don't. All right. So, you know, just be aware that, um, you know, some of this theory is going to be a repeat, you know, but it's presented in different manners, different fashions. I mean, in those introductory uh, introduction to accounting and bookkeeping ones, um, you know, I present I presented the information, you know, using flow charts, whatever have you. OK, and it's you know, it looks very different from what you saw in the textbook, but it's still the same thing, you know. Um, and as I'm explaining it, uh, you know, I am, you know, even though I don't have the forms, you know, the, the blank forms and I'm actually writing in a journal and actually writing in a ledger account, I am trying to present the information as to how I would be doing that stuff in the workplace. So with that said, um, you know, what we're going to cover in these theory videos, um, as I just said, you know, what was covered in chapter one and other videos is a repeat. We're going to cover what double entry accounting is, and I actually call it double entry bookkeeping. Okay. Um, you know, and that means, you know, basically, you know, debits equaling credits and everything balancing out. I'm going to cover how to make a journal entry. Okay. And even though the textbook shows um, the steps, you know, a, a step by step process in the textbook, I think about it differently. And I'm going to present how I think about the uh, making a journal entry. I know that I had started covering that in the chapter one theory and also even doing the exercises I was going through my thought process. But I'm going to try to make it just a little bit more clear in this series of videos. Um, T accounts, you know, what they are and how it, how they're used. T accounts are nothing more than a tool, right? Um, a trial balance, um, remember a trial balance is nothing more than a listing of the ledger accounts and the balances in the accounts. And in chapter one, I kept on alluding to a, you know, uh, a trial balance because we were presented data that had ledger accounts and balances. And I would allude to what the trial balance looked like. Well, in this chapter here, we're actually going to see what uh, the formatting for a trial balance. And again, uh, financial statements. In chapter one, um, we presented you know the financial statements, and I had said what order they come in, and you know the flow of the information, and why we did what we did. And that's pro you know basically we're going to cover that again in this chapter. And then the accounting cycle. Um, in the theory videos, the introduction to accounting and, and bookkeeping videos, I cover the accounting cycle. I mean, there's just one slide with a uh, process flow chart on it. But I'm uh, for this chapter, I actually I'm using the uh, circular flow that was presented in this chapter, and you know I'll explain it. And, and it's always good to have th these kinds of things in the back of your mind. If you notice when I had talked about financial statements in the, the uh, chapter one videos, in creating them, I had said, oh, here's a process. You know, it's not step by step mimic it exactly. It's a here's the way to go about thinking about it in a step by step format. So even though it leads you. All right, as you know, you know where you're at in the process, you know, it takes into account variations and, you know, idiosyncrasies at those points in time. So as long as you're, you get the general ideas to where you're at, you know, and you start seeing, you know, deviations from it, you know, it's sort of like the income statement where you have revenues and expenses. You can, you know, that gives you a profit or a loss. Well, on the surface, you know, you only need two general ledger accounts. You need a revenue account and an expense account. So why do we have all of the other accounts? You know, you know, uh, service revenue, advertising expense, payroll expense, utility. Why do we have all of these accounts? Well, that allows us to be able to do financial analysis on our uh, on our information, um, and it's a deviation from that very, very basic structure. Okay, but in knowing how to put together an income statement, which is revenues less expenses if you 
understand that underlying structure, then when you see all of these additional accounts, and believe me, as you go forward, it's just going to expand and expand and expand, um, you're able to see the underlying structure and follow and understand what you should be doing. Okay, so that's the introduction, um, you know, for these theory videos um, for chapter two. And I will, you know, I covered this first one here, um, you know, the covered in chapter one and other videos. And so in the next video, I will pick up with the double entry bookkeeping.